in lab. Uh, Mr. Nadesha was uh, a doctor. Uh, which he was uh, studying in Beihang University, and I'm a postgraduate student. So we we had a great time in the lab. Uh, we talk about everything, and we uh, also I, I also learned some Pakistan uh, culture from him. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a long time. I since uh, last time met with uh, uh, Nadesha in Shanghai. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for the invitation. So uh, to introduce myself. Uh, so uh, may I just like uh, is my voice clear, uh, Doctor? Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, Windows. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen now? No. No. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Okay. Okay. That's great. Okay. So let me uh, increase this. OK, yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, all the students coming to this uh, uh, webinar. So um, this topic is about the a practical tutorial on Kubernetes networking. Uh, so this is uh, uh, why I choose this topic is because the Kubernetes is a very uh, successful platform and it is a very beautiful platform. Uh, it is used in many companies um, and it is uh, uh, very like uh, uh, in, a, a, in every area it is very good design. So I think it's a very good uh, topic to talk about this. Um, so the underlying knowledge is uh, this is some some basic knowledge we may need to know like for example for the networking uh, we need to know the IP protocols TCP NAT DNS HTTP I guess you guys may uh, you guys may have learned those topics in uh, in school and like switching routing and operating systems Linux. Um, some of the basic concepts about the process, bash, um, Linux habitables, and especially for virtualization and the container, uh, such as Docker, and uh, also data formats like uh, uh, YAML files and JSON files, which are used for the configurations and the uh, data transfer. And also the key value storage uh, in Kubernetes, we use uh, ETCD. Uh, this is another key value storage, which is Redis, which is also very, very popular. Um, and also some basic uh, concepts about software engineering, like uh, scalabilities, uh, high availabilities and low balances, portabilities and uh, securities. Those are some of the underlying knowledges that we uh, need to know. So uh, first of all, uh, Kubernetes is used in this industry for a lot. Uh, initially, Kubernetes is designed for the Google Cloud cluster management system, and it, it, uh, Google did donated this uh, product to uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation in 2014. Um, as far as I know, this platform has been used a lot in the industry. For example, the AI training platforms, uh, they need to have built up a platform which you may run many of the uh, containers. Kubernetes is a great candidate for this, uh, for this kind of work. Um, for example, like image uh, private cloud, uh, open AI, ChatGPT training, they are all uh, based on the Kubernetes. Um, and also in Cisco, within Cisco, we have a product which is called uh, ECI, application centric infrastructure. This is uh, this one. Um, we also have some Kubernetes uh, integrated together to management uh, to manage some of the uh, VMs in the um, in in the ACI, and this a long list uh, about the uh, about the companies who use uh, Kubernetes uh, like uh, Airbnb, Spotify, Slack, uh, Spotify. 
So I, I, I think you guys can find this in Google. Uh, it's, a, it's a very long list. Um, so before I talk about the, uh, and the Kubernetes networking, uh, I need, let me just introduce uh, some of the uh, basics about the Kubernetes. Um, basically, Kubernetes is about managing the container, uh, containerized workflows and the services. Um, it is all about sharing the machines between the applications. Traditionally, uh, we run all the application on the operating systems, um, on the hardware, based on the hardware. Um, after that, we have some hypervisors like uh, QEMU, KVM, um, Zen, this kind of uh, hypervisors. Um, on top of the hypervisors, we build the virtual machines, and on the virtual machines, we, we have the operating systems and run the application on top of that. <coughs> so, excuse me. And then uh, it is involved to this container uh, deployment, which is a light way of uh, virtualization. Basically, um, we have the hardware, and then on top of that, we have operating systems. And then on top of the operating system, we have the container runtime, uh, such as Docker. On the container runtime, we run the containers. It's a, a very light way compared to the, uh, the hypervisor where we need to be, uh, host the whole VMs, uh, which like requires a lot of memory and, uh, and CPU. Um, this is a, a basic uh, architecture, so architecture about the Kubernetes. Um, on the left side, we have Cooper Control, which is uh, basically uh, calling the API from on the Kubernetes. So um, we, the uh, the Kubernetes API server will be hosted in the con control node. Control node we will be uh, we only need one control node uh, for Kubernetes, but we we may have have more. Um, but uh, by default it is one, and more, it is very common to have one control node. For worker nodes, this is where exactly the uh, the workloads will be round uh, round on. Uh, there will be multiple work nodes. Um, so when the API comes to the API server, uh, it will go to the uh, the uh, Coop proxy. This proxy is for networking. I will talk about details about this in the following slides. And then the Kubelet will get those requests, and then uh, it will uh, do the do the task, which is. Uh, Get the uh, may get the uh, uh, Kubernetes like the container image and deploy that, and then um, some of them may need to uh, we need to uh, basically call the uh, container runtime. Uh, container runtime may uh, I will talk about details, which basically we have uh, container D or the CRI or O. And then the container runtime will do, uh, do, do work for the containers. Uh, for example, allocate the uh, CPU memory and the disk. And then uh, also include the networking. For networking, it will call the CNI plugins. And uh, that's the, uh, that's the uh, major part that we'll be talking about in the following slides. On the left side, I will not go into the details of each component, but uh, I will quickly go through. For example, this cloud controller man manager. This is uh, when our Kubernetes deploy in the cloud. Uh, if we want to use some of the cloud uh, features, we may need to use this uh, controller, such as uh, if we want to use the load balancing in the cloud, uh, we may need to uh, use this controller manager. Um, this uh, uh, Coop Controller man uh, uh, Manager is basically uh, check all the objects of the, uh, the status of the objects to see uh, if it needs to do, do something. For example, if uh, for deployment, uh, if uh, the replicas is uh, three, and if there are only two ports are running, 
then it will automatically uh, allocate another port for this deployment. So uh, I, I, will, I will mention that uh, some of the details uh, in the following slides. Uh, Kubernetes scheduler, which is basically scheduled at the uh, the pods where to deploy the pods, like which node to deploy the pods. Um, and Kubernetes proxy and Kubernetes. This is uh, the two components which we run in all the nodes, including the uh, controller nodes and worker nodes. Uh, Kube proxy is for the networking, and Kubernetes is basically get the uh, host. Uh, get the request from the API server and then um, and then do some work for that request. ETCT is uh, it's uh, basically a key value uh, storage to save the states uh, for each uh, for each deployment and uh, also it has uh, saved the configurations. So this is the architecture. Uh, so. Uh, before we talk about the networking, some of the some of the concepts in Kubernetes we need to understand. Uh, first one is the pod. The pod is a minimal deployment unit in Kubernetes. Like sometimes we call Kubernetes, we use K8S. There are eight characters between KS, so we call KAS. Um, it contains one or multiple containers. So well, one question is that why? Does Kubernetes use a pod as the smallest uh, deployment unit? Uh, why not just use a single container? So uh, the reason is that it is, uh, uh, although it is simpler to deploy a single container directly, but uh, the container, uh, there could be different container types like uh, Docker's, like RTK container, uh, or maybe uh, maybe it's not container. Maybe it's a VM which is managed by this uh, uh, virtual let. Uh, each of these have different requirements. So to use a container, I mean not that uh, like uh, we don't have a uni uh, like a uniform of uh, uh, of the uh, deployment. So, and what's more that to manage the containers, like uh, uh, we need to have some additional information such as uh, uh, this restart policy, um, which defines like uh, what to do with a com uh, container when it uh, uh, terminates or uh, uh, live is pop if something is not live or something wrong happened, what to do? Um, so, with container, we, we don't have such flexibility to do that. Uh, that's why Kubernetes used this port, which includes one or multiple containers as the minimal deployment unit. Uh, this is a, a config example, uh, which we can use in Kubernetes. So uh, this is a YAML file. Uh, first of all, we def define the kind. This is a port. And then the port name and the labels. Uh, this label is very important in Kubernetes. Um, this is used as a selector when we uh, when we deploy a service. We can see that in the later uh, slides. And this is a spec, uh, specs. Some uh, to list the containers. Like for example, in this port, I will have two containers. One. Uh, is the webcam, which is the name, uh, and then the image is uh, engines, engines, and the port numbers, the which port uh, that had the service. And the second container is uh, the uh, FD locker. This is just for, for locking. So this defines a port, but uh, of course, this is a very simple example. It has many more uh, configuration attributes. So um, the second the concept is the deployment. Like uh, the port, uh, what if one port dies, right? Uh, so deployment, uh, it, uh, like for if one port dies, uh, basically what to do? And then the, if, if, if we have a service deployed in this port, then the service is not be able to uh, reach. So uh, to solve that problem, uh, the deployment 
The diploma is uh, uh, basically solving the problem by providing the declarative updates for the ports. For example, I want to replicate a certain number of the ports so when one port dies, it automatically spawns a new one. Uh, yeah, this is very really used for the high availabilities and low balance. Uh, like high availability, we can easily understand like one, one port died, uh, we need to have a new one spawned. Uh, spawned. Basically, the service will be uh, automatically uh, brought up. Um, and the load balance is like we, we can have multiple parts with the same service so that uh, um, we can distribute the load to different parts. And this, uh, this deployment is also very useful for the rollout releases. For example, we have uh, developed one product uh, and then we have a new release we're going to roll out. How do we do? There are different uh, types of uh, uh, deployment we can do. For example, like a rolling update, a canary up, uh, deployment, an A or B deployment. And basically rolling update is like, uh, um, I will have some of the, uh, I will like uh, replace the uh, port, the old port with the new image, like one by one, free, uh, one by one. Uh, for for example, like uh, initially the port, the deployment may have like 10 ports running the same service. And then I will replace one by one. Uh, uh, the nine of them will be the old image, but one will be the new image. And then frequently, uh, like uh, one by one, eight of them will be running the old uh, old image, and then two of them running the new image. So this is called the rolling update. And canary update uh, deployment, like one set of the, uh, one, uh, like one deployment with the old uh, service. Uh, another deployment with the new service, which is one the new image. So this way we can uh, we can test it, the new release, but we don't uh, we don't need to replace all of them all of, uh, all of the pods because of uh, the new release may have some issues. So this is the second uh, uh, canary deployment, and A B deployment is basically like uh, uh, in one service which is used to uh, old uh, images and uh, another one. Uh, another deployment with the new as uh, new release image. So uh, once the new image is being tested enough, it will switch to the uh, switch switch the uh, old ones. So this is called the AP deployment. So um, it's very useful by using this deployment for for this. Um, this is an example. Uh, the, uh, this is a YAML file for deployment. Uh, the can will be deployment, and then uh, like here, uh, I need to deploy three replicas for this port. Uh, basically, it runs three three ports in each port, which will have the, this containers, this uh, engines. Okay, um, service. So. Okay, if if one port dies, the deployment works great. Like the deployment will be uh, automatically bring up a new port. But the problem is that uh, when when it uh, bring up a new port, it will assign a new IP address to that port, which is not good because uh, uh, like. Uh, uh, for example, you have a service run, you, you have a product which is running in this port, but you have, after it is died and the deployment automatically brought a new one, it has a new IP address. So, you, like, like the IP address changed, you need to change uh, maybe the, uh, uh, tell the customers to change the IP, right? Or in the load balancer, if you have a load balancer, you need to change the uh, replace the old IP with the new IP. So that is not very uh, efficient and uh, uh, it's very difficult and complex. So service is uh, designed to, uh, to solve this problem. Like uh, uh, a Kubernetes service is uh, 
abstraction which defines a logic set of the pods, which is running somewhere in your classmates and provides the same function functionalities. And it gives the pods their own IPs, but a single DNS name for a set of pods. So this IP address for this service will never change, although some of the pods for this service maybe died, maybe uh, maybe we have increased some of the pods. So it doesn't matter. As long as the IP address for this service doesn't change, then customers, they don't need to like change anything. All the low, our load balances like don't need to change anything. The service IP is always there uh, and static. So this service is designed to solve this uh, 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 this issue. It is very useful uh, in the production. So this is an example. Uh, the Yamafa for service, uh, the kind will be service, and then we use the selector. This is a very uh, important attribute, which means what kind of ports will be included in this service? Like uh, uh, in this service, I will get all the ports which has the key as tab and value as web server. And so all the web server ports will be included in the service. And then we have the port number. And this tab is, uh, for example, here I use not port, which is uh, Basically, I want to expose this service to the outside for external use. Um, I will talk about the different types of uh, uh, yeah, uh, the different types of service here. There are three main service types here. By default, we use cluster IP. So the cluster IP is basically a IP address which is internal to that node. It cannot be accessed by the outside. Um, for example, here we have uh, three ports here, and then we have a so we create a service. By default, it will create this cluster IP, this IP address. You can, as you can see here, this IP address is an internal IP which cannot be accessed by the outside world. So uh, the second uh, Tab is the load balancer. Load balancer, this is uh, only created, only can be created when our Kubernetes is uh, in the cloud. We, the load balancer will be, uh, where we use the load balancer, which is provided by the cloud, for example, like uh, AWS, HO, or Google GCP. They have some load balancers. We can use their load balancers. Um, this is a, this is a second the service tab, which means we will use that for load balance, and then the users, the outside users, can uh, they just need to uh, the uh, the traffic will first go to the load balancers, and then it will go to uh, this uh, this not port. The not port is the the uh, the, the third tab I'm going to talk about. And then you go to the uh, cluster IP, and then eventually we'll go to the pods, individual pods. Okay, the third tab is not pod. This allows uh, external traffic to access the service. It is uh, uh, basically by opening a specific pod on all the nodes. Um, for example, here, this is uh, uh, when we specify this not port for this service, uh, we will use a UT, uh, UT, uh, like TCP, TCP port number. It's a high end number. Uh, use a port number from, from this not. And then the outside, we will use that port to communicate, to talk, uh, to access the service. Which is behind this uh, behind the the service. Um, so yeah, this is an example. Uh, as you can see here, if it is only a uh, cluster IP, then the service can only be accessed inside this uh, uh, Kubernetes. It cannot be accessed uh, outside. If we have the not port, 
then it can be accessed outside. And then on top of that, we can also use some cloud load balancers. So this is a three major type of uh, for the service for the service. And this is a very uh, important component in Kubernetes, which is called Kub Proxy. Uh, proxy is in charge of managing the network connectivity of the containers. So we just talk about the service, how that works, like internally, how that works. So it, it's actually sim it's actually pretty straightforward. Like uh, uh, it, it basically it will translate the service into the net rules. It is by using the by creating some of the IP tables or the IP virtual server rules. So some of you may, some of you may be familiar with the Linux IP tables, which is a very important uh, component in Linux networking. So you can configure the rules to redirect the traffic. So here, this Cooper proxy is basically use this IP tables to translate that service. Uh, for example, we have the not port, right? Uh, we have the not port, which is a, a, a uh, like uh, TCP port number, and then we will uh, you, you translate that one to the uh, internal port, which is uh, used by the uh, by the internal port. Um, so yeah, basically uh, this is how it works for the uh, for, for for to make the service uh, traffic work. There are two uh, two two modes like we can use IP tables or we can use IP virtual server. For IP tables, uh, it is a no load balance, uh, and, and then lookup time is also uh, a little bit slow. Uh, it's big O n, um, but the advantage is that it presents in all the Linux distribution, uh, distributions. And for the IPVS, uh, it, it has uh, some optimized lookup with the uh, big O one time. It's very fast, and it supports the load balancing but it does not present in all the Linux distri uh, distributions. Um, it only in a set, set, set of the Linux has this IPVS. Um, okay, the service is working great, okay? Uh, but what if there are the many services to manage? Uh, Ingress controller is designed for this. Um, basically, it is work like this. Uh, we have, for example, we have a service here. Uh, we have service one, we have service two. Um, on top of that, we create an ingress controller. It is uh, basically, uh, it's like, a, it's, it is like a low balance, like, a, or like it's, uh, it looks like, a, like a, similar to an API gateway or something. Like uh, uh, if the, uh, if the request is for this service, it will redirect the uh, request to, to, to this service. And if the uh, URL is in a different service, it will redirect to the different service. So um, this is uh, this is very convenient when we have many services to manage. Uh, this is an example here. Uh, the uh, YAML file configuration, the kind is ingress. And then uh, the rules, like as you can see here, we have two services running in the Kubernetes. One is called this WWS, uh, the third page, uh, and then another one is the second app, any name. And the uh, for this for the first service, the the select the the backend will be the this name will be the uh, third page uh, service. And the port will be this uh, AT. And the second app, the backend service will be this uh, second app. And the port number is also 80. So when the traffic comes, it based on the URL, it will redirect traffic to different the service. So it's very convenient. Like uh, if we have like uh, uh, a lot of uh, service, then we just need to uh, create this ingress and then automatically uh, it will distribute the request to different service. Okay, so we talk about the, those concepts, and then I talk about. Uh, let's go to this uh, network model. So in Kubernetes, um, 
So before Kubernetes uh, yeah, invented, like we always run the service in the VMs. So once we have this Kubernetes developed, uh, like uh, uh, how do we move this work workloads from the VMs to the Kubernetes containers without any change? Like we don't want to uh, change the apps. So we just want to uh, quickly move this app, uh, this apps from the VMs to the Kubernetes containers. So with this requirement, it means like uh, the pods needs to be communicate with each other uh, without any net. We don't want the net, okay? And then agents like the assistance demos, uh, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes, uh, they are on one node, they, they should be able to communicate with all the pods on the other node. So this is like two requirements. The main challenge here is that the implement implementing this uh, requirements uh, that we have, uh, if those containers are in different nodes. So that's the one of the challenge. Um, there are four different uh, networking problems to address here. Uh, for example, the container to container communication, um, how the traffic works. Basically, it is uh, uh, solved by the ports and the, um, and the Linux and localhost. Um, this is uh, like uh, uh, basically provided by the Linux kernel. The port to port the communication, um, we use. Uh, network plugins to solve that. We, I will talk about this uh, in details. And port to service communication. This is covered by the uh, services, which is rather the Kubernetes proxy, which we talked about that, which you, uh, basically we will use the IP tables or IPVS, uh, it convert the service to the rules. Um, and also the external to service communication. Uh, this is also covered by the not pod type of service, which we dis just discussed. Um, basically, it is uh, exposing the service to the outside by using the uh, by, by using the IP table rules. Um, so before we talk about the CNI plugins, I want to talk about this uh, container runtime. Um, because the content one time we are uh, including everything, not only networking, it will include uh, like uh, the uh, disk files or everything else. Uh, so what is the content one time? It's basically it is responsible for managing the ex execution and live cycle for the containers within the Kubernetes. For example, you pull the image and run the containers and allocate the resources and Kubernetes runtime interface, it is a, a basically a set of APIs that al allows the Kubernetes to interact with different container runtimes. And, and the CRI defines the APIs for creating, starting, stopping, and deleting the containers, as well as for the managing the images and the container networks. For container networks, that is CNI that we are going to talk about. So Kubernetes support the uh, container runtimes. Um, we have two major container runtimes, which one of the one is the container D, which is used by the Docker, and another one is the CRIO, uh, which is uh, developed uh, for the Kubernetes. So as you can see here, Docker, it will call this runtime, container D, and then it will, uh, uh, based on the OCI spec, uh, it will go to this runtime C, and it will directly uh, deploy or manage those uh, containers. For Kubernetes, um, it is based on the CRI interface. It, it, it may call the CRI, uh, CRI, CRIO, or it will call the container D. Uh, by, using, uh, by using that, uh, it will uh, manage this uh, containers. Uh, um, yeah. So this is the idea for the container runtime interface. So let's go to the container network interface. Um, so, there's no standard implementation of the Kubernetes network models. Uh, 
So the preferred to implementation is greatly depend on the environment where the cluster is deployed. There are many different CNI plugins exist from many different vendors. So um, some of this provide only some basic uh, feature of hiding or removing the network interface, where others provide more uh, sophisticated solutions such as the OLAs, OLA networks. Um, so that's why the Kubernetes team they decide to uh, externalize the approach and direct the task of implementing the networking model to a CNI plugin. This will make the uh, make the network layer uh, pluggable. Um, CNI is a, a common network interface. It is for any container runtime, not the strong tied to Kubernetes. It can be used for others as, as well. Um, it is a vendor neutral spec, not just for Kubernetes. Used by uh, it can be used by Portman or CR, C, CRIO, which is used in Kubernetes. Um, by the way, Portman is uh, similar to Docker. Uh, it can also use the CNI, and the config format is based on JSON. And some of the basic commands will be add, delete, check versions. And then um, uh, the plugins are uh, executable. Basically, there's some binaries that can be run as a process in the uh, Linux environment. Um, we can see some example in the demo. Um, some of the common CNI plugins, uh, like a bridge plugin, uh, all the containers are plug plugged in the bridge. Uh, for example, the virtual switch. Um, Loopback plugin. Uh, this is for the loopback interface in a VN or port. Bandwidth plugin. It is for port ingress or egress traffic shipping. Overlay plugins like uh, Flannel, Wheel, uh, Canal, uh, Calico. This is an uh, enterprise the K uh, Kubernetes networking. Yeah, there, there are many more CNN plugins. Uh, I just listed some of the common ones. So um, I will go through this, uh, uh, the different uh, traffic uh, flows. Uh, for example, for container to container networking, how it works. It basically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we use the Linux lo local host. Uh, for example, here, this is in the one, in the same node, we have one port here. We have two containers inside this port. The container one wants to con uh, communicate with container two, so it will just use the local host. And for the port to port networking, um, the traffic will go to the uh, Ethernet zero, and then it will go to the virtual interface, network interface, uh, and then it will go to this virtual bridge. It could be a, a it could be a, like a, a Linux uh, a, a bridge which is provided by the Linux kernel or any some other like a CNI plugins. Um, and then it will go to the other site uh, uh, virtual network interface and then eventually it will go to this port. So this is a, a traffic for the port to port networking in a single node. So what happens if the port to port is in different node? For example, I have not here, not one here, and not two here. So I have these ports to communicate. Uh, as you uh, remember that we don't want to use the net. We don't even want to use the net for the uh, for for these for for the port to port communication. Um, what we do here is that uh, there are many solutions here. Uh, basically, one solution is that uh, we can use the overlay, overlay network plugins. For example, the uh, the Flannel plugin, it uses uh, overlay network. So overlay, which means it is a, a encapsulation of the existing uh, a traffic, for example, here. 
I have 192, 16802, and talk to you this, uh, this one. So it will add another layer uh, encapsulation and then um, send the traffic between those. So this is called the overlay. Um, another solution is that we, use down, we can use down, uh, CN, uh, CNN plugin, which is called uh, Calico. Uh, basically, it, it doesn't use the overlay, but you use the uh, layer three routing. Uh, it is based on the BGP routing protocol. So uh, I don't have the uh, diagram here, but basically it is like you use layer three routing to uh, route the traffic between these ports, which is uh, uh, existing in a different node. Okay, for port to service networking, uh, how the traffic works, for example, this port in this node one, wants to talk to the service inside uh, not to. So the traffic will go to here, the virtual network interface, and then go to the virtual uh, bridge. Um, and you will go to the, uh, it will use the IP table rules to, uh, to basically convert the, uh, the, 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 the not number, uh, the, the, the port numbers. Uh, based on these IP table rules, it will send the traffic to this uh, uh, cluster network, uh, and then go to the other side, which is uh, Ethernet zero, and then it will also use the IP table to convert this uh, the traffic, uh, convert the traffic back to the uh, to, uh, to, for example, it will use the uh, uh, NAT, NAT rules, convert, use the NAT rules to convert that traffic to an internal port number, which is only understand, uh, understand, uh, understood by this, uh, uh, this ports inside NOT2. So this is a port to service networking. The key, uh, the key components is like Kubernetes proxy. Um, the next one, network to service networking. Uh, internet to service networking. For example, the external external world wants to talk to service inside this uh, uh, deployed in the ports inside here. So uh, initially, you will go to uh, if we have load balancer. If this is deployed in the cloud, uh, we may use a load balancer which is provided by the cloud. Uh, if it has if we use the load balancer, load balancer, it will go to the load balancer first, and then it will go to the not port. The not port is, uh, uh, is essential for the uh, external uh, to expose the service to the external. So it will go to the not port, which is uh, uh, which is a port in the not either not one or not two, and then it will go to uh, the use the IP table rules. It will uh, convert. Uh, convert the traffic, convert the port number to the uh, to the uh, port number which is understood by the ports. Um, yeah, so this is a this is traffic for the internet to service networking. Um, so I will give a small uh, demo here. So uh, for the demo, I will use uh, this uh, free Kubernetes playground. Uh, let me go to here. Uh, let me see. Okay, I'm in here. So this is a like a sandbox. It is uh, uh, provided by this website. Uh, you guys can go there also if you want to learn Kubernetes. You can go to here. Uh, this a playground, and you can select the Kubernetes, and then you can uh, configure anything, uh, almost everything in the in this playground. I have prepared some of the. Uh, some of the uh, sample configuration which are listed in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, PBT, uh, for example, uh, the port uh, uh, I will deploy a port, I will deploy a deployment, and then a service. And um, I'm not sure if it's big enough. Let me just copy this first, and then I'm not sure if you guys can read this. Okay, let me increase this one. Yeah. For this service, 
I use this uh, service tab as a not part. And then uh, the selector will be tab web server, which means I will select all the parts which is deployed in this deployment. Uh, and then this deployment will have three replicates, which will create three parts uh, inside this uh, deployment. So let me copy, I copied this one. Let me create a file here, uh, the YAML file. And then I will put, so you paste everything. Okay. And then we can use the uh, Coop control, which is a CRI uh, provided by Kubernetes, uh, create and directly specify this uh, uh, YAML file. As you can see, it is getting created. The pod is getting created. Deployment is created and services are getting created. I can uh, group control, um, get, get the service. So this is my service. This is a, a basic uh, service, which is uh, defined here, like basic service. You can see here, uh, by default, the service tab is a, a class IP, but I I use it. I use this uh, service tab. I use this not port uh, service tab. So if I use this one, what it does is that it will create a cluster IP, and also it create a not port. This high end port, which is a uh, this one. This is a low end port. This is AT, which is only can be communicated in the cluster. This one is the port, which is a, uh, a port which is a, a, a get from the VM. But this is a sandbox. But if it's in a real environment, it will be provided uh, uh, from a VM. This port can be accessed by the external world. External, like for example, I use the uh, browser. But because of this is not a real VM, um, it, it's just, just a sandbox. So I don't have the public IP, the external IP for this sandbox. So I cannot demonstrate that. But this is the idea. Uh, it, the not port will create a high end port which can be accessed by the external world. OK, this is a service. Let me get this. Uh, let me add the de uh, deploy. Uh, or maybe let me just do this. Okay, get the deployment. Okay, this is my deployment. Uh, as you can see here, this is my deployment engine's deployment. I have three replicas uh, and the images engines. Okay, let me get the pods. Let's see. See, uh, this is the three pods that is uh, deployed by the engine's deployment. I have three replicas. This is one, two, three. It is automatic, uh, automatically created by Kubernetes. So um, let me give one, one for, for example, uh, let me give just one uh, small demo. Uh, Coop control, uh, delete. Let me delete this uh, port, OK? If I delete this port, it should automatically create another one. As you can see here, I delete this one, it will automatically create this one. Okay. Um, let me get some more information about the QGET uh, port service. Let, let me uh, display everything here. Um, Okay, as you can see, okay, let me give some right, uh, give this option, and then I, you will see more details here. Like for each port, we have an IP address assigned by Kubernetes. And then um, this service, this service will have a cluster IP and a, a port, a, it, it's a, a low end port. And high end port, this is a not port. Um, if you use this one, we can see that uh, we can get the service from here. 
192.168.16. See, this is the port. We can directly get the service, uh, access the service provided by the engines here. We can also by get the service, access the service by using the ser this cluster IP, for example, here. 10.99.99.182. See, we also get the same information. So this is a uh, this is idea. This is idea for this uh, uh, class IP. Uh, this this one will never. This one will, this IP will never change. But this IP will change if we uh, delete this one. It will change to a, a new IP. So this is a small demo for this uh, uh, port and then deployment and the service. Um, Another one is that I want to show you quickly about the ETC, the CNI. Uh, the CNI, we have in this sandbox, we have some CNIs which are defined in this file. For example, this is a, a Calico, Calico CNI. Um, basically, this is a tab, this is a binary, this is the binary that is run, this is running as a process. And then you specify some of the logs, and then IP AM. This is uh, basically uh, for the IP address management. Um, yeah, another Kubernetes, another plugin is the port map. The port map is like uh, uh, just the, the mapping the ports. And another plugin is the bandwidth. This is like three CNR plugins which is used in this sandbox. I just want to quickly show you. This CNI uh, is used in the sandbox and it will be called by the uh, 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 container runtime. Um, yeah, that's a, that's the idea. I just want to show you quickly. Uh, yeah, this sandbox only has one hour limit limitation. So I started before the meeting, so it, it is uh, expired in uh, expired, but that's fine. You can you can restart again. So I think that, that's all I want to I want to show you. You, you guys can try this uh, uh, with something else like uh, Ingress controller, uh, which is uh, uh, which is you need to install the Ingress controller and then uh, put the configuration as I listed in the PBT, and then you 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 can manage like uh, multiple services. So yeah, this is a uh, uh, this is a demo. Um, and then uh, recap, like we talked about uh, uh, the underlying knowledges for the Kubernetes and the usage of the Kubernetes industry, uh, Kubernetes, some of the basics like the port, why do we have port, why do we have deployment, why do we have service, and why do we need this ingress controller. And for service tab, we have cluster IP, not port, and load balancer. And we talk about the networking network model. Um, and then we talk about the uh, container runtime interface. Uh, basically, we have two types of uh, uh, container runtime, container D, which is used by the Docker, and the CRIO, which is used by the Kubernetes. And container network interface, which is the, for the networking plugins, uh, we have some common ones like Bridge, Linux Bridge, uh, Overlays, uh, Calicos, Plugins, and there are many more plugins. And traffic flows, we talk about the container to container traffic, which is by using the Linux localhost, port to port. For sync or not, it will uh, just use the uh, 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 bridge uh, switch, virtual switch, and then uh, for Internet, it will uh, use some of the overlay, uh, like overlays or the IP IP routing, and for the port to service, um, we talk about the how it works by using the Kubernetes proxy and external to service. Um, we, it is also used the uh, Kubernetes proxy. Uh, it may also use the load balancer. So this is uh, uh, the traffic flows. Some of the reference, I think uh, those links are very useful, uh, even for my understanding. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that pretty much uh, uh, everything like, like I want to talk about uh, for this uh, uh, network, Kubernetes networking. 
So any uh, any questions? Like before I go to the next one's uh, slides, which is uh, some tips for the job seeking. Uh, let me know any questions for the uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, networking. Um, Thank you. Uh, any question from the audience? Question okay. uh, Thank you. I think uh, they, I think uh, they don't have any uh, questions. Maybe they are shy. Okay. To, uh, ask them. Questions? Okay. Uh, let me uh, ask you that is there any uh, uh, kind of procedure available if someone wants to develop a particular module, like for example, load balancing with a new algorithm that is more efficient? So, is there any kind of support available if someone wants to uh, uh, develop a, a new algorithm and wants to integrate that into Kubernetes? There are uh, okay. Uh, are you asking like them any like new algorithms uh, or in, in, yeah ag algorithms? Yeah. For example, if I want to have a, a new uh, algorithm and uh, for load balancing, and I want to embed that algorithm into Kubernetes. So, uh. Uh, for Kubernetes, I I don't think accuracy is uh, uh, accuracy is very important here. Uh, like uh, for load balancer, maybe there are some like accuracy, but it is really not related to uh, not related to Kubernetes itself. Um, so accuracy may may not a very uh, like uh, top like it's, it's not a big topic in Kubernetes. Uh, but I do know that there are some projects which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, needed for Kubernetes. For example, like the so artificial intelligence training platforms. They need to, uh, for example, for the GPU, right? If uh, for for AI training, we need to use the GPU. So GPU, which cannot be running well in the con containers because it needs. Uh, resource you need to like cpu resource memory resource huge which is better to run that in the vm so in that case there's another component which is called the uh, coop virtual coop virtual is basically like uh, how to manage the vms in the kubernetes so these are these are like kind of projects in the uh in the kubernetes i believe there's some more other projects uh, in the kubernetes but for accuracy itself, uh, I don't think uh, uh, I don't think that's uh, that's that it's a very important like uh, uh, it's a very important in Kubernetes. That's that's my understanding. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, another question is that, for example, if a call is scale, uh, it is a uh, uh, died. So can we get uh, that why it is uh, died? Maybe it's the reason something like that for the System log. I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. You, the voice is a little bit breaking. Oh, uh, okay. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, please, please go ahead. And for example, if a call is uh, tight, so can we get the reason that why it is Died. Ah, okay. Okay. When a port is died, can we get with it? Yes. We can, we the Kubernetes uh, the Kubernetes control the COI has some like uh, locks. It will get the locks, which uh, uh which will uh which will basically it will get the exact reason like uh, uh how why it dies. For example, like uh, uh maybe some of the service. Maybe some of the service which is uh, a crashed, okay? It has some logs, uh, bring it in the Kubernetes. So we can use the Kub control uh, lock and then the port ID 
then we can get the, this locks. And then it, Kubernetes also has some events. So those events can also be used to detect uh, if something wrong in the system. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, that is there any kind of API that uh, I, uh, we can use some kind of uh, declarative uh, instruction that if uh, if, a, if a pod is uh, uh, died due to a particular reason so we should have some kind of another um, uh, uh, for example if a pod is died due to any uh, particular reason so we want uh, another kind of uh, strategy to implement so is there a kind of uh, declarative language support available or we have to uh, dig out from the you know, text file and then we have to find out the reason Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. So, so if uh, you mean like if if it dies, like uh, we like uh, uh, how do we have some like uh, mechanism mechanism which is uh, to uh, to to respond the service, right? Uh, yeah. That, okay. So, so as I said, like uh, in the deployment, the deployment, like. Uh, Basically, uh, you specify like how many replicas you want to you want to create for this uh, deployment. For example, I want to have ten pods, which is uh, one in the same uh, service uh, uh, behind, right? And then if one dies, then automatically it will just uh, uh, respond another pod. Um, so this is a, this is a basic uh, uh, this is a very basic uh, uh, policy in the Kubernetes. So um, I do not know if there's any other uh, mechanism that you can uh, use a different way uh, to uh, spawn the pods. Maybe uh, like that one, you guys can do some investigation. Uh, I do not know that part. Yeah. So the only thing I know that uh, based on the deployment, we can automatically spawn that uh, that service. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you, Mr. Uh, Xian Longqin. Uh, thank you for your valuable time. And indeed, it was a, a great talk, and we have learned a lot of things, uh, especially uh, the students. Maybe they they were not uh, familiar with this type of uh, technology. So they learn a lot, and uh, we are thankful to you. So uh, anything, if you want okay. to ask. Okay. I just I just have one last slide, which is like uh, you mentioned, like uh, give some advice for the job seeking, right? So, yeah. So uh, let me go to there. Uh, so this this is the last one, job seeking, basically. Uh, get familiar with the basic uh, uh, basic uh, technology like uh, operating systems, uh, networking, database. Uh, those basic ones are really important. Uh, as you can see, this uh, Kubernetes pod, uh, product, it is uh, fancy, it is very effective. Uh, it is used by many companies, but the underlying technology is very basic. Uh, it used the uh, OS, uh, like uh, Linux IP tables, Linux bridge, uh, the networking provided by the Linux, and then like uh, the networking is also very basic, like we use some like uh, IP, BGP, uh, DNS. You you can understand this uh, uh, like TCP, UTP, right? DNS, that's the basic stuff, and the database uh, like uh, uh, we have the uh, key value storage. So these are really important. Uh, I think in every job that we are, are important. And also you need to master one or two major programming language like uh, C, C++, Python, Golang, Java. These languages are very popular in the industry. So you, you really need to at least understand and master one language. Um, it's very important. And also, I think the another very important one is that practice algorithms a lot. I mean a lot because uh, this company they will ask you write the algorithms like uh, ask uh, ask you to solve a problem in maybe half an hour, maybe in forty five minutes. So practice uh, this algorithm in Unicode.com 
or hyperrank.com. They have like a thousands, like more than 1,000 questions you can practice there. So this is a very important. Um, the next one is that you need to know the system design concepts. So maybe in junior engineer, they will not uh, uh, ask you about the system designs. But if you do know, I think it will uh, give a good impression um, that you know something better than others. And also, uh, if you have some projects, especially if you can contribute to open source projects, that will be great. So these are the tips that uh, I will give to you guys. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I want to talk. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Xian uh, Longting. Thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful talk, and we have uh, we had a great time. So thank you. Uh, see you uh, next time, hopefully. Uh, thank you thank so you. much. Yeah, yeah, and thank you for all the students coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.